My name is Scott Hamker. I'm one of the teachers at Westwood Middle School. Welcome to Elyria High School and welcome to our science fair. We have schools of Northwood, Eastern Heights, and Westwood represented here today. I'm going to go around and show you some of the outstanding projects that our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders are presenting here this evening. David, what's your project? My project is about um, if different colored plants, I mean if different plants would grow differently under different colored lights. Okay, where did you come up with this project? Um, we were just, I was just brainstorming some ideas and I thought, hey, why not just do this? Were you surprised by any of your results? A little bit, but not really. Okay, who did better? Who did worse? Um, the black light and the yellow plant did very terrible. The orange light plant did okay, and it was slightly shriveled, and the red plant did the best. And what kind of plants did you use as prayer, part of your project? Prayer plants. Okay. What do you notice about the plants? Is there anything important when you put them together? Um, is that they didn't, it, the red one grew the most, and the orange one didn't grow too much, and those two just died. Okay. And what did you do for control regarding water and everything else? Oh, uh, we watered it about, um, we watered it two times a week. All right. Well, thank you, David. Thank you. Best of luck. Best. Thank you. I was changing my nephew's diaper one day, and it just like intrigued me, like how much a diaper could absorb. So I just wanted to like see what different types of liquids could like um, it could absorb fast enough or faster than others. Okay, Carsey. So what kind of liquids did you test? Um, I tested like um, a different various types of water, like hot tap water, cold tap water, um, smart waters, and distilled waters. Okay. And I did teas and coffees, uh, three different types of sodas, energy drinks, and various types of juices. Okay. And what surprised you the most right off the bat? Um, that like the hotter liquids absorbed faster than the colder ones because I was thinking that with the density of the colder liquids that they would absorb quicker because there was um, more weight to them. Did you try certain brands of diapers or you just stayed with one diaper brand? I was going to use a different brand that my sister-in-law gave me but I really couldn't figure out how to fit that in so I just stayed with one particular brand. So based on your findings which brand was the best? Uh, this one, the uh, Loves. The which one? The Loves. The Loves diapers and with what product? Um, the hot water because that's what absorbed fastest. Good. Anything else you'd like to tell us about your project? Nope. Well, congratulations and best of luck. Kayla, can you do me a favor? Can you tell me what's your project? So I tested carbonation in my four pops, Coca-Cola, root beer, 7-Up, and Mountain Dew, and actually I did, I tested two, like I tested it twice, and yesterday when I tested Coca-Cola was the biggest, and root beer was the second biggest, and then 7-Up and Mountain Dew were the two smallest, but today when I tested they were all about the same size, and... How are you determining your test? I see you have balloons on all of them, but what are you trying to test ultimately? The amount of carbonation in the pop. So as soon as you took the cap off, you put the balloon on? No, I actually had pop rocks inside the balloon when I put them on and I tilted them up and then it blew up the balloon. Was a certain kind of pop rocks, certain flavor, certain anything? I used a watermelon. Okay. Tell me, what'd you come up with this idea? Um. I was just looking for science fair projects and I seen a picture like this and I did some more research on it and figured out how to do it. Great. Is there any results that you were completely surprised by the first time? I know these are just done here recently, but before, was there any results that were surprising? Yes, I actually thought that Mountain Dew would be the biggest balloon because it also had citric acid in it and so that and the carbonation and the pop rocks mixed together, I thought it would be more bigger. Is the science fair really that hard? No. Were you nervous? Yes. You did a great job. Congratulations. And what school did you come from? Northwood Middle School. Congratulations. Thank you, Kayla. Carson, drumstick rebound. What's that all about? Um, well, I was testing to see like, if the 
different wood affected how high the rebound was on the drum. And what'd you find? Well, I found that the hardest drumstick, well, the hardest wood, affected how high it was because the, the, the hardest bounced the highest, the second hardest bounced the second highest, and so on. I know drumsticks are made out of wood, but what types of wood are out there that you tested? Um, oak, hickory, maple, and hickory again, but with a nylon tip. Okay. Any results that were kind of surprising? You said hickory and then hickory with a nylon tip. Did it bounce well? It didn't bounce well. Um, well, they both bounced pretty much the same, actually, except um, the nylon tip made a slightly different noise, but that was pretty much it. So which one overall, in your eyes, had the best rebound? Um, the hickory, I found, was the highest. Well, I did it by using a weight and pulley system to drop the drumstick at the same at the same height every time. I got the measurements by recording it on a slow motion video with a graph on the wall, and we would pause the video and at when it, when the drumstick was at its peak, and we could measure it from there. Um, I did. I bounced. I hit the drum like five or six times every time and I found the average and that was how I found my how I found the answer. All right Ben, you're a seventh grader from Eastern Heights, correct? Correct. So you have a project. Do plants have feelings? Do they? I would certainly say so. And why do you say so, Ben? Well, uh, my results would say that they do and let me show you why. So for my experiment, I recorded over seven days how plants would respond to emotional stimuli. Now, for 15 minutes each day, I would take my plant, put it into a secluded room, and I would either be I was kind to one, very kind, and I played classical music for it. And for the other, I was unkind and played angsty music. Um, and after seven days, you can see that the flower I was harsh to began to wilt. Which one is the one that was after seven days? Uh, this flower is the one I was harsh to, and it's recovered, it's since recuperated because I watered it, despite being that the one I wasn't harsh to was fine, even without water, or much of it anyhow. But you can see the discoloration in the leaves with this one, and it's drooping, not blooming as significantly. Let's grab your other one here. Your other one you said you were kind to. Exactly what do you mean when you said you were kind? I complimented it. I spoke in a very soft and gentle tone, and I played classical music to it. I encouraged it to grow. Tell me about the watering procedures. Did you water it a lot, a little? I watered it somewhat scarcely, but I wasn't in it any means depriving it. I watered them every two days and it seemed to be effective on the plant I was kind to. Good. Is this a project that you could tell other people you should get involved in in the future or was it really something that scary? Oh, I can most certainly say that people should try this out for themselves. Uh, I, for one, would love to try this again, but with five plants I would be kind to and five I would be angry towards. So you already have a future idea for next year? Yes, I'm thinking of doing this again next year, just with more plants and perhaps a slightly different stimuli. Sounds good. Thanks, Ben.